Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, one of the most perplexing aspects of the investigation, um, particularly so when we see thousands and thousands of photographs being released by the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, and yet not a single one showing the bones how they were found. Um, and of course, that's, that's particularly um, frustrating, isn't it? Because um, experts could have um, looked at the photographs and seen if the body was burnt the way it was said, it, you know, the way it should be, uh, whether everything was in the right place. Um, so anyway, I, I just want to read you through some, uh, some of the trial testament and see, what, see if you come to the same conclusion as I possibly do. This is the testimony of Tom Sturdivant. Now, he's the member of DOJ who actually takes responsibility in, in the trial for not having photographed the scene as it was, as it was discovered. Okay, not um, Jason Jost was the guy that actually first discovered uh, apparently an inch long piece of bone in the grass about eight foot away from the burn pit. He never makes it into trial. It's Tom Sturdivant that, uh, that is the DOJ officer that, uh, that is the one that's being, um, that is under direct examination by creator face himself, Tom Fallon. Tom Fallon says, let's talk about what you did after you and Deputy Jost examined this particular bone fragment. What did you do? Tom Sturdivant says, after looking at the bone fragment, I then walked towards this burn pit. So I walked from the piece of bone fragment out there to the burn pit. I looked at the burn pit. I observed that what I thought were other bone fragments in and around that burn pit. I picked up a twig. I moved some leaves and other things and I could see the other bone fragments within the charred debris. I noticed what I believed to be skull fragments in the debris and intertwined within the steel belted tires. Aside from that, I didn't do much with that burn pit. At that point, we were trying to get in contact with the folks from the crime lab, as well as some of our arson folks. Tom Fallon carries on. All right. And were you able to get hold of anyone in the arson bureau that particular afternoon? The answer comes, myself and another agent were trying to contact the arson folks. I spoke with Kemmel, Kevin Hermel. I believe Deb Streis spoke with special, special agent Fassbender as well as one of our other arson agents that happened to be working the investigation. Question. All right. And you mentioned something about the crime lab. Tell us about their involvement, if any. Answer. We attempted to get those folks to the scene. I understood that the crime lab was busy retrieving or collecting other evidence from burn barrels and so forth. So they would not be available for a bit. The arson agents that we spoke with were also busy with other investigative activities. So we waited for the crime lab to show up. Question. All right. And at approximately 3 p.m., were you assisted by members of the crime lab? Answer. Yes, I don't have the exact time. But at some point later on in the afternoon, the crime lab, lab did show up. I believe it was John Ertle. Guang Zhang and Chuck Cates, who arrived with a van and set up a sifting apparatus, a large sifting apparatus on a tripod that required two and three people to assemble it. Question. All right. And before they came with their equipment, was there anything removed or any shovels taken to that pit? Anything disturbed in the fire pit area before the arrival of the crime lab by yourself or any other law enforcement officer in your presence? Answer. Nothing was introduced between the time that we discovered the pit and the time that the crime lab arrived. We did not have proper equipment, gloves or proper clothing to process that. Question. Did the crime lab 
provide the necessary equipment to begin processing? Answer, they did. Well, is somebody not telling the truth? Because we have here the testimony of John Ertle under cross-examination by Jerry Butin. And Jerry Butin says, um, and only then, after you photographed and documented the scene, do you start moving things around, collecting, whatever. John Ertle, correct. Because once you do that, you have altered the scene. Answer, that's correct. Now, he's re referring to, in general, what should happen. However, question, and when you were called over to this burn area behind the garage, you didn't take any photographs then either, did you? And that's because the scene had been altered before you arrived. Isn't that right? Answer, yes. Question, and in fact, you expressed concern at one point to the investigations investigators in this case that you were unable to make a more thorough record because you were not used for the complete scene processing. Let's just, let's just back up a minute. Fallon and Sturdivant. Fallon, question. All right. And before they came with the equipment, was there anything removed? Or any shovels taken to that pit? Anything disturbed in the fire pit area before the arrival of the crime lab by yourself? Or any other law enforcement officer in your presence? Answer, nothing was introduced between the time that we discovered the pit and the time that the crime lab arrived. We did not have proper equipment, gloves or proper clothing to process that. Question, did the crime lab provide the necessary equipment to begin processing they did and yet we've got Buting speaking to Ertl and when you were called over to this burn area behind the garage you didn't take any photographs then either did you and that's because the scene had been altered before you arrived isn't that right yes so who's lying well maybe none of them maybe they're both Telling the truth. Because if you've taken, if somebody has taken a burn bowl full of burnt debris, bur burnt bones, cremains, and remember they've been pulverised as if they've gone through half, half of a, um, a professional cremation um, process in, in, a, in a, um, you know, a crematorium. Remember they've, you know, they've been pounded very, very small. We're talking, you know, small one inch, two inch fragments and, and far less than that. So these, these bones have been gathered up in this burn barrel and they've just been dumped in the burn pit. So when Sturdivant comes along, remember, I, 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 I don't recall any mention of him having a, having a camera. Um, I don't think he was the official photographer at all. Um, we see obviously um, Tyson with his video camera stuff um, and obviously you know various people did take photographs but that Wang Zhang was the official photographer from the crime lab John Ertl's team so Tom Sturdivant has stood there as he should do waiting for somebody to come along John Ertl comes along oh it's been altered that's not that's not how the how the bones would lie just a thought. Um, if, and if, if you've got any, any thoughts on this, as I say, the, the lack of photographs has always troubled me. And, and I often wondered if maybe photographs were taken and kept in Tom Fassbender's private possession because he likes to keep hold of evidence for some reason. Um, as I say, maybe they're actually both telling the truth. Um, certainly, I, I, I have no reason to, to question some of uh, John Ertl's uh, testimony. He, he certainly comes across as quite honest. Um, Tom Sturdivant, as I say, he actually takes responsibility, responsible, responsibility for, the, for the lack of photos. Um, although, I don't know if he had a camera. Um, 
I would assume he was waiting for you know, the crime lab team to come along and do their stuff. But clearly, the bones were not the way they should be. Ertl realised that straight away, that they were just dumped in a pile. You can imagine, the, you know, all the bits of bone fragment, uh, you know, bits of skull mixed in everywhere. Well, are they suggesting that, you know, Steve and Avery haven't burnt the body? Very, very nicely arranged all the bones into a nice little, little pile for them. Clearly, clearly, when they've been dumped, John Ertl has realised that because he's a, obviously a, an expert in these, uh, looking at um, you know um, the the burning of, of bodies, he's had previous um, re uh, knowledge of that um, and done investigations on that. Um, could tell straight away that that was not how. That was that wasn't a a, a genuinely um, produced scene. Um, anyway, as I say, let me know what what you think. Um, I say it could be that they're both lying, but it could be that they're both telling the truth. And maybe that's the reason why we do not have any photographs of the crime scene. Um, because, as, as I say, John Ertl wouldn't take photographs once the scene had been altered because there was no point. Okie dokie. Um, well, it's really all I've got time for for today. So uh, catch you again soon. Bye for now.